Hi everybody, it's Rich Carell and here we are at Icons of Darkness. Now today, I'm here with two really good friends of mine, Marsha and Ed Edmonds, who run Distortions Unlimited. And Distortions Unlimited has been a leader in making all kinds of decorations and special effects and Halloween things and haunted attraction things for years and years. But Ed, you yes. guys are responsible for, you know, probably the most impressive piece in the show. Yes. This is the Queen <laughs> Alien from the movie Aliens, the Jim Cameron movie made in 1986. You guys are going to see a whole bunch of original props, original costumes, hero costumes, stuff from original molds, everything studio stuff. Oh yeah. So it's like... It's perfect. It is. And you know perfect. And it's all the real stuff. Yeah. So oh, we, when you look at stuff, you're going to say, oh, that's really Val Kilmer's suit or yeah. Michael Keaton. Yeah. It's all the real yeah. stuff. Right here is Michael Keaton, one of his hero costumes from Batman Returns. That's 1992. By the way, everything in this show is the same height and weight of the actors playing them. So I use life casts to make the faces, and everything's exactly their size. If they look small, that's because they were small. If they look yeah. tall, it's because they were tall. Oh, that's, wow, that's Michelle funny. Pfeiffer is only 5'3 in real life. She's wearing four-inch heels, so they lifted her up. That's one of her original Catwoman costumes and cowl from 1992. And Danny DeVito is only four foot eleven, and here he is in his entire penguin costume. So there he was as he appeared in the movie, and that's even his umbrella. That's the real one. Yeah. That's all. Everything's the real one. The real costume, real hat, real bows, real everything. Good grief! I love that you did that. You know that you kept the right size. And, and then behind you, this is the first uh, Michael Keaton suit he ever oh, wore yeah, yeah. in '89. That was for the first movie. Oh, that's fun. So this was the first Tim Burton movie, the first Batman movie. Next to him is Val Kilmer and Chris O'Donnell, both from Batman Forever. And that's where the suits started changing. All the Batman suits are made of neoprene. Yes. So we have silicone, slip rubber, foam rubber, and neoprene rubber. So everything's different, but those were sculpted down to be smooth. In the, in the movie, they're supposed to be like bulletproof and everything, right, but in real right. life, they made them so they flex so much because right. they're so light. Yeah. Wow. All right. You know, we had that mask. And that's different between us and you. We got to borrow it for three weeks. You get to keep it. This is Wesley Snipes' hero costume, glasses and armaments, everything from Blade Two, And that costume with those armaments is exactly what appears on the one sheet of the movie. So if you see the one sheet, there it is, exactly what he's wearing. And what's really cool is behind that, that's a Sylvester Stallone costume from oh, Judge yes. Dredd. And that was designed by Versace. And then next to that is a Tobey wow. Maguire Spider-Man suit from Spider-Man 2. And underneath it is his muscle suit. So yes. that's the hero muscle suit too. Yeah, that's like the original Willem Dafoe's Green Goblet helmet from Spider-Man. And then this is a Hugh Jackman Battle Arena costume as Wolverine from the first X-Men. Behind that is a RoboCop 2 hero Peter Weller costume. Oh, man. And here's Arnold Schwarzenegger's hero Mr. Freeze costume. That costume weighs That's 81 pounds. Oh, my gosh. Well, he could handle it. Yeah. He, that costume's 81 pounds, and the gun oh. weighs about another 12. But oh, it's oh, resin, man. and then it's, it's heavy cloth, uh, and it's all kinds of bunting. Uh -huh. And then there's an undersuit. You can see parts yes. of the undersuit under it. Right. Okay, next to that is Alicia Silverstone's Costume, that's her screen used Batgirl costume from Batman and Robin. That's the whole thing, too. Oh my gosh. And here's one of Christian Bale's hero costumes from Batman Begins. So, in here, we have original costumes from Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, and Christian Bale. The only Batman I don't have is Affleck, because none of that stuff has come around. Everything in this collection, you guys, was purchased legally, like it. Yep. public forums or auctions right. so I have the right to exhibit it and charge people to see it yeah. because I bought everything in public forums legally so there's nothing in here that was hot or stolen or anything like that okay. it's all stuff that studios was aware was being sold yeah. okay you guys this is my fav favorite Batman suit this is the Sonar suit worn by Val, Val Kilmer in Batman Forever and what's cool about it is this is the only design Batman design suit that crossed over between two movies so Kilmer wore it in Batman Forever, and then Clooney wore it in Batman and Robin. Not the same suit, but the same design. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> this happens to be the one that Kilmer wore. Wow. Marsha, come down here. <laughs> Marsha. Yes, sir. You know who that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I I've just seen him. At him and, I was like, and then you know who that is. Favorite. That's a Christian Bale suit from Batman. <laughs> oh, okay, now look. How did That's I fall a for that? Now, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Ed and Marsha, who scare more people yes. 
than anybody in the world. And if I can scare her, we're rolling. Isn't that the best? Holy you got you, you are awesome. You that got was, me, right? I got her. That was the best thing ever. It was good to point yeah, it out, was, though, because like, what's this? And then as the Rocketeer. That's his helmet, his entire costume, and the rocket pack. And if you look carefully in his left hand, he's holding the accelerator button. Oh, That's the thing that makes him fly. <laughs> all right, so all of these characters from The Matrix were actually, these were all sculpted by computers. So the actors would go oh, into a wow. 360 rendering, like a photo booth at 360 render them and then give that information to the computers and the computers would sculpt all the molds and then that's what came out of that. Oh, nice. And the reason these are so accurate and you can see Lawrence Fishburne, if you look at him carefully, you can see all his acne scars. Right. They're exactly the way he are, is in real uh -huh. life because that's what the computer sculpted. These are all original wow. costumes belonging to Carrie Ann Moss and Keanu Reeves and Hugo Weaving in the back there, Agent Smith. That's actually a puppet. So if you get behind it, you can man manipulate the head oh, and the hand. Man. Yeah. So every, he's from Matrix Two. Everybody else is from Matrix One. You don't get to see the practical T Rexes and things like that anymore. Oh. These are all from Jurassic Park. This That's whole setup gorgeous. is from Jurassic Park. Look at that. That's one of the female raptor heads from Jurassic Park Two. She's about 650 pounds, and all the hydraulics are still in her. Oh my. So that's absolutely really? beautiful. This was all built by the Stan wow. Winston company. Oh. These are all Rick Baker Gremlins. These are all from Gremlins and New Batch. And that includes the Gizmo Puppet. Oh, that's one of the original man. puppets. And all of these guys are puppets as well. Some of them are half puppets. And you can see in the back, we left some of the handles that manipulate their arms. Oh, that's so cool. So that's all. Now, Mila Kunis, that's her hero costume hat and broom from Oz the Great and Powerful. And that's her life cast and makeup with a fake nose and a fake chin on it, but that's all the stuff she wore in the movie. And then this, that's my favorite that? figure. That's yes. my favorite yeah. figure in the whole show. Yeah. Mike Hill built that. Oh, uh, nice. That's Margaret Hamilton from The Wizard of Oz. Now, Judy Garland was my next door neighbor, oh. and I asked her about Margaret Hamilton a number of times. Margaret Hamilton was only five foot two, yeah. so they had to put her up on boots. She also was one of the only actors that never complained about the makeup and the Technicolor lights and the hot and everything. Yeah. And she's also one of the only characters that was ever hurt because she yeah. had a copper base makeup yes. on. And when she appeared in those plumes of fire, one oh. time it heated up and she got second degree yeah. burns on they her face. Her yeah, yeah. And, and it still yeah. never complained. Wow. Yeah. She was sweet. Everybody That's else, awesome. the Tin Man and the Lion, oh, I'm oh. hot and I'm complaining, yeah, yeah. except her. Wow. And of course, in real life, very sweet. And the coolest thing is, when she made that movie, she was only 36 years old. Yes. Everyone Isn't thought she was like this yeah, old lady. Yeah, yeah. No, but not at all. Yeah, she was truly amazing. Okay, now you guys, all Lord of the Rings stuff. I got this from Weta. This is Lurtz's hero armor and his makeup from Lord of the Rings. That's all the hero stuff. Peter Jackson sent me this orc and that orc because he, we went to, Beth and I went to visit him in, at Weta in Wellington. He was so nice and I said, I was collecting his stuff, so he sent me that stuff. All of these are orcs from the movies, except nice. this is from Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. And the Cyclops is from Narnia. That's a silicon head with all the cabling behind it, so it moves its oh, eye, geez. opens and closes its eye, moves its mouth. That's all on the one sheet wow. as well from the Narnia movie. The two great big guys are Slee Stacks. Those are both from the Will Ferrell movie, Land of the Lost. And then this is Goro from Mortal Kombat, another really heavy costume. Yeah, really. This is one of the great um, pterodactyl heads that the Stan Winston Company made for Jurassic Park 3. The teeth are not foam teeth. Those are all like shark teeth, and they're really, really, really sharp. Oh, wow. But anyway, this is one of the puppet heads. But about a year ago, I bought the entire nest. So it's a pterodactyl mother. She's about nine and a half feet tall. She has an 18 foot wingspan and she has five of the babies that she's feeding in the nest. It's the most beautiful thing you've ever Where seen. Is she at, man? They, did, they aren't here. I mean, oh. I didn't have room for them. Yeah, oh, yeah. However, I think we're going to have, because Joe Petro is restoring them all. Oh, okay. And I think we'll probably put two of them in here, yeah. two of the babies. Oh, yeah. But it's the most, these oh. puppets are unbelievable. I mean, can you imagine this yeah. thing is like as tall as this? Oh, yeah. So cool. Okay, now I'll show you something over here that's kind of cool. Oh, by the way, this is a Spinosaur. Uh -huh. That's another 600 pound hydraulic head. That was built for Jurassic Park 3. The Spinosaur is the T-Rex killer. So this, this is also the one that kills a guy and swallows him and yeah, yeah. swallows the cell phone. Uh -huh. So every time he comes around, you can hear him ringing. Uh -huh. Again, a practical head. Most of these heads are not practical yeah. anymore. They're all CGI, uh, yeah, so but sad. these are all the practicals. That maquette back there, that's a maquette of what the whole 
monster was supposed to look like. <laughs> this is a Kyle Thompson replica, but we wow. put it, but we put it in because it's fawn from Pan's Labyrinth, and that's also another Doug Jones costume. You're going to see some more original Doug Jones costume, but we wanted to put that in. Uh, that's obviously the most famous film. And you guys, that's a Turing costume that was built by ILM for The Empire Strikes Back. And in the, in the plastic box, that's one of the production built heads that was used in both the Star Wars 1 and 2. Oh. So that's from A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. This is Alec Guinness's life cast and makeup as Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's really awesome. That is. Boba Fett's from the second movie, and this wow. is a stormtrooper from wow. the first movie. Wow. We're going to see a lot more Star Wars stuff, wow. but we're going to head this way first, and then we'll come around the corner. Okay. Are you having fun? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Well, yeah, you know, if you love of... these films, it's like you're... In heaven. Well, what is it, like artifacts, but like ancient artifacts? Yeah. And those bulls ended up with uh, the Stein brothers, the Sam Stevens guy. So those bulls. That's Harry's acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Oh. And all his requirements for what he needed. And this is, these are the letters, this is the letter that came down the chimney. And that's the envelope it was in. And the red ceiling wax is behind that as well. And here's a picture of them doing it. This is all the original stuff. And that's like the most famous Harry Potter artifact. Wow. Ray Fiennes is Voldemort, including holding one of his original wands. And next to that is Daniel Radcliffe's hero costume from Hogwarts from Deathly Hallows Part Two, and then Dobby hiding behind Harry, which he normally did in the movies. But those are all originals as well. This is a Terminator, this is an endoskeleton from Terminator Salvation. Yeah, wow. That's also a hydraulic statue. It's very, very heavy, but it works. It does wow. everything. Both of the endoskeletons are from T2. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger's hero costume, one of them. I actually have two more of them, but this is one of them from the movie, and that's his hero grenade launcher. Well, it's the rubber one he uses, right, right. but that's the one he carried around in the movie. Now, guys, what's really cool is this is his appearance. That head came from Stan Winston as well. Behind it is Robert, next to the left is Robert Patrick's. That's one of his hero suits as the liquid T-1000 robot, and the cool thing about that is those things all open and close. There's cables behind it, no and they all way. breathe. This was mostly a CGI effect, but that's actually an onstage robot. Oh, wow. Behind it, that's a Jordu sculpt of that's Peter like, Cushing as good. Grand Moff Tarkin. That's good. And then next to that behind him is one of the hero Tusken Raider costumes and heads from the first movie. The Yoda is actually made from original moles. That's not one of the original puppets. If it were, it would be worth about two million bucks. Oh, yeah. okay. Luke Skywalker, that's Mark Hamill's face uh -huh. in makeup as Luke Skywalker uh -huh. from the, the Return of the Jedi. So there's no mistake, there's no prosthetics on him. That's, uh -huh. Ray, that's Ray Park's original costume, his hero costume, as Darth Maul, who was my favorite villain. This is an Ewok from the third movie, and that's a sand trooper from the first movie, a Cantina band member, and that's from the first movie. Uh -huh. Wow. Lots of cool, and I have a lot of Star Wars miniatures too, which are really cool. Oh. All right, now we're moving this way. The reason I left the Metaluna Mutant in here, that's a really famous universal monster from 1955, a Technicolor movie called This Island Earth. Kind of a cheesy movie, but the that reason- was, Oh no, it's such a classic. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. The reason I put it in is because I found the original head, hands, and feet mold, so I had the rest of it rebuilt, but you can see how Tim Burton was obviously influenced by this movie because of the brains yeah. in the Mars Attacks guy. Oh. All these guys have giant brains. Yeah. Right. So we wanted to put them all together. That, that's the ID4 autopsy alien that they lay on the table and cut open and the little guy comes out of it. Completely silicone. The whole thing's built out of silicone. It weighs a ton. Yeah. Really, really, really cool. And this guy's the only, the only autopsy one they built. They didn't build that many of them for the movie. No. Okay, so this guy here, this is from Star Trek Voyager. That's a, that's a hero Klingon costume and one of the hero Klingon heads. And behind that is Leonard Nimoy. Again, that's another Jordu head. Oh. But he's also wearing one of the screen used TV oh. show costumes. So the reason I wanted the head is I wanted to put it on the costume. But that was from, this is from 64. 66. 66. And that's the shirt he wore. That. I, I literally have goosebumps movies. right now. Why? Literally, I don't know. I don't, it's really bizarre. I, was, they, I had a thing with certain characters. Oh. Well, I'm glad you like it that much. One of them. You guys, all Academy Award winning makeup. John Chambers from 1968 for Planet of the Apes. Wow. 
which is Kim Hunter, Maurice Evans, and Roddy McDowell. And then from the, from the Rick Baker one in 2000, we have Michael Clark Duncan, Tim Roth, Helena Bottom Carter, and Paul Giamatti. And then all the rest of these are all makeups that Rick built. And then the two Gorilla Warriors are both from Planet of the Apes 2001. And then the littler guy, the little Gorilla Warrior, is from the 1968 movie. Now you think, well, the great big guys are much more intimidating, so that must be cooler. But the truth is the 68 movie is a much better movie. Yeah, so he wins, yeah. that guy wins, the little guy wins. Yes. Yeah. No, no Richard, I gotta stop you a second. Are you saying uh -huh. that? The thing is, you yeah. know me. I started collecting it. I started this 60 that's years ago. That's what's different about you. you no, I was 10. 10 when you started. Collecting. Leave it to Beaver. I was on Leave It to Beaver when I started collecting. This is one of Leave It to Beaver's friends, by the way. Yeah. And do you know when, what's the first piece you got? Um, when you walked in the door, uh -huh. there was a little framed 8x10 of Karloff from Abbott and Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh -huh. <coughs> we asked our makeup guy if we could go up to the lab to see, this is Jerry Mathers and I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To see if we could, well, we want to see monsters and everything. And they said, yeah, come on, boys, because we we're always bothering these guys. <laughs> so we went up to look. And we couldn't believe what they were throwing in the trash. You're gonna see, later on, you're gonna see the Creature from the Black Lagoon, an original mold costume. Yeah. But the original costume was thrown in the trash. So anyway, I, I looked in the trash, and there was a half mask of Karloff. I'm sure it was a stuntman, yeah. a guy named Eddie, uh, Eddie Parker, who, play, who, who played, did all the stunt doubling for Karloff, of Mr. Hyde. And you know, everybody was reading Famous Monsters of Film Land and yeah. watching Shock Theater. And yeah. I, I knew what it was, so I said, hey, can I take that? You know, I was like 10 years old. You know? Nice! And the guy went, yeah, sure, just take it. So I still have that, by the nice. way. Nice! Oh, yeah. So that was, that, was, that, that was made in, no, it's still in storage, it's oh. under glass. Oh. That was made in, the movie was made in 53, and I took it in 59 or 60. Wow. And they had just thrown it in the trash. Wow. Okay, now, Marsha. I keep uh -oh, saying to Marsha. Watch, watch out. Now listen, you know what this is? Yes. That's the original muzzle mask they take, they take Lecter off the plane with in Silence of the Lambs. Wow. And next to that is one of his straight jackets in his prison uniform. That's cool. Behind you is a Howard Studios Jack Nicholson. He's holding an original axe. Oh, wow. From the movie and his coat and shirt. That's all the original stuff. And that's a beautiful figure of him because yes. it's got yes. punched hair, acrylic yes. teeth, glass eyes, and he has silicone sweat all over. Oh, it's <laughs> so he has to be just like the movie. Oh my gosh! You like that, huh? Did that. Howard Studios. Oh, Howard Semp did it. Oh yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is a movie called Dead Silence, and it's James Wan who made Saw. It was his second movie. This is the guy that made The Conjuring and Insidious and all those movies. He's a really good director, young guy. Dead Silence is about this creepy old lady that makes these ventriloquist dummies. That's one of the original mm. dummies. And that's her in her costume and makeup, which we got directly wow. from uh, the guy who built all the stuff. And I just loved having her in here because that's creepy. Beth thinks that's Super scary. Super creepy. And yeah. it's such a good movie. A lot of people haven't seen Dead it. Dead Silence. Dead Silence okay. it's called. So oh, funny. Behind you is John Carroll Lynch's hero costume is Twisty. That's from oh, American Horror Story. Yes. Includes his face and his makeup. And by the way, underneath the smiling teeth, if you take that off, his mouth is all torn up. You know, I wish you could show both. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Because yeah. that's really scary. And here's the scariest clown right there. Pennywise. Ooh, nice. Oh, that's yeah. Bill Skargar's original costume. Wow. That's his original costume is Pennywise. And then next to him is the portrait lady. That's the lady that comes out of the, her own portrait when she's wow. all twisted up. So that's really cool. I wasn't going to put her in, and these friends of mine said, no, you got to do that because she's scary. But that's all the original stuff, too. Wow. Isn't that cool? I'm behind you. This is Amber Tamlin's body. She's the first victim in the ring. Uh -huh. and, then the, and then there's the ring girl. Uh -huh. I bet you know who that is. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you like aliens and predators, you'll like this room. It's, uh -huh. It starts with this guy right here. Oh, gee. Every, by the way, everything in here is a costume. You know where that came from? I do know where that came from, Rich. Tell me where. Distortions Unlimited. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, I've heard of those guys. They're I, awesome. Oh, that's, that's one of the hot. face huggers. No, no, that's one of the originals yeah. from the lab scene. Yeah. And behind it is a predator from the movie Predators. And then over here, check this out. This 
That's the original oh, prop. That man. prop is actually what they start the movie on. They actually start the, the film Alien Resurrection on that shot of Sigourney Weaver. That's a Pat Patrick McGee alien. Now you guys, I'll show you something really cool. Oh, this is the holy grail of alien costumes because that's the first costume from the first movie. Oh, man. Wow. That took me like five years to put together. It came from five different sources, including one source in Hong Kong. Wow. But that's the whole thing. And there's a guy wearing that costume. Look how thin the legs yeah. are. Oh, is this the, what was used? Back here, this great big tall guy. That's a Predator from Predator 2. That's one of the original costumes from Predator 2. Wow. These two heads are war party heads from Predator 2 as well. Here's a, this is the monster that's born that thinks Sigourney Weaver's its mom. Yes. We actually made that mask for a while. Well, you know, you know what, the thing about this, Ed, was so beautiful, because you guys made these up from original molds and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, we had to prop her up from the center. Oh, yeah. But that's okay, the rest of it worked out fine. But what's cool is, <coughs> the original molds for this, that stands maquette. Oh. Oh, which was in so his office. Oh. That was in his office that was built for Cameron. Oh. And that was in Stan's office. But every single thing on that, literally every single thing on that's right here. Every rib lines up, everything. So the moles were oh. dead accurate, Good. like perfect. This is a face hugger from oh. Aliens. But well, what's really, well, there's female parts. Oh, yes. But what's really cool in here is there's signatures of things. Look out! Oh, oh, did it get you that time? A little bit. I got me just a little bit. How did <laughs> got you more? I'm still, I can't believe that I get to scare the distortion guys. They scare everybody. And then this, you guys, is a scar predator from Alien vs. Predator. Again, guy wearing this is 7'3", and this weighs 91 pounds. Oh my God. It's a foam suit, and then these are resin armaments. Who wore it? I don't know the name of the guy. And, there, and this, at the same time, this one was working. Those are both from the same movie. Wow but they both worked at the same wow. time. So the guys in these things were tall and hot. Yeah. And they had to run air yeah. up their legs and everything. Wow. Oh, man. This is from uh, Redemption, and that's called the Bullwhip Predator, and he's got two different colored eyes. And again, this whole thing's a costume. And this is one of the only costumes they built for Alien Resurrection. Yeah. You can see how as, this, as the films progress, the legs get whiter and whiter and whiter. Yeah. yeah. So that's another costume. Look at this. Yeah. Ah. And here, the guy would see out of here. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then this would be manipulated with cables or remotes. So a very heavy stuff. Heavy. These are all original Chucky dolls. Oh. This is from the first movie. This down here is a good guy doll from the second movie. Uh. Next to that is one of the boxes of the good guys. That the, they came in those boxes. Then the doll looks like this and then turns into that. And then in the back are two Chucky and Tiffany dolls from... Um, uh, Bride of Chucky, those are originals and the original costumes in that head is a stun head worn by a guy named Ed Gale. In this box is a Freddy Krueger head from New Nightmare, that's 1994. By the way, Robert England is the nicest guy in the world, the nicest guy in the world. Awesome. There's one of his left hands, you can see it's beginning to kind of fall apart. Yeah, yeah. Some of that I left like that and then yeah, a lot of it right. I restore. No, I think that's that's one of his original gloves and that's from Nightmare 3. And this is from Nightmare 5. That's his sweater, his hat, his glove, and Robert England's entire makeup. That's all, that's all from that movie. It's all the real stuff. Now, Marsh, you know who that is? Huh? Do you know who that is? Well, I don't know if you're going to trick me. No, I'm not tricking you. This is a Jason. This is a guy from... Oh! I got her. I got her. I got her. This is... The setup's the same. Honey. This is turning into a coming. great. I did. This see is it. turning into a great game. Because I looked at you, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, oh. You know what? It's all misdirection, as you guys know. It's all misdirection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the saw puppet. And now, if you look over here, and as everybody looks over here, this yeah, yeah, guy jumps yeah, yeah, at you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. No, but this is this is James Wan that stuff. You guys, this you got me. this is one of Kane Hodder's original suits, and this came out from Part Seven, and this was actually in Crystal Lake. It was a foam suit that was in water. Oh, so I had to wow, take it, get wow. all the water out of it, completely restore it, re-rubberize it, because this thing Jeez, was trashed. Yeah. I got this from Rob Bottin, and when I got it, it was trashed, oh. totally wrecked. And Joe Petro rebuilt the whole thing. Oh, that's, wow. that's the Crypt Keeper, who was the host of the 
yeah. HBO series. What? Now, Marsh, why don't you just go no. like really close? Yeah, yeah, just really go right, close. just walk right up to him. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're coming down here. Watch your I step. Like Watch your step. This is a stunt suit Ooh. worn by a stunt man from Jurassic Park 3. The giveaway for the Raptors on Jurassic 3 is they all had the porcupine quills. Ah, but yeah. this is actually a stunt suit worn by one of the stunt men who had to walk around like yeah. this. And then they would have to manipulate the head. So again, really heavy costumes. Okay, and you guys. Oh, I see it. You know what that is? That's the hero T-Rex head from the very first movie. No way. That's the one that tries to take wow. the kids out of the car. And when we go around to the front of it, when you imagine that thing's in a hydraulic lift coming oh, after yeah. these kids, it's, it's really scary. Uh -huh. Here's another Doug Jones costume oh, from Pan's Labyrinth. This is of the pale man, the guy, the monster that sees with his, eye, with his hands. <coughs> Doug wore wow. this section up, and then uh -huh. all the legs uh -huh. were just green CGI oh, with, yeah, with yeah. computer trackers on him. So he probably had green at below his waist or something. Yeah, he never, he never, uh, he just used his regular legs and they substituted all the legs. Wow. But that's the whole suit. Okay, come on over this way. Now, you know what this is? Yes. Okay, that's Jim Carrey's life cast and makeup as Stanley Ipkiss and Peter Green's life cast and makeup as Dorian. That's all from the mask. And this mask is in that picture. Oh, no. So that's one of the hero masks that Carrie's holding in the picture, in the movie. Now, I told you we had Walking Dead stuff. Both of these things are from The Walking Dead. But what's cool is these are the first two zombies they ever made. So it's Patient Zero. Oh, really? Patient Zero that's and fun. Bicycle Girl. Yeah. Greg Bicycle Nic Girl. Yeah, that's, that's fun. Greg Nicotero made both of these for the series, for the original of the series. You guys, that's one of Rick Baker's makeups of Michael Jackson yeah. from Thriller. That's his makeup that he looked like when he danced yes. at the end of the movie. And this is when he's earlier in the movie when he's a werewolf. Yeah. This is a creature from the Black Lagoon made from original moles. The original land suit, as I told you, got thrown out. So we rebuilt this. But what's cool about this is wow. I had this completely rebuilt and then used at the Playboy Halloween parties oh, that you guys yeah. were. And here it was. Oh, by the, it by was the, in the grotto. Yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. Hefner and there it is in the grotto. Isn't that So something? people say, well, what went on in the grotto? You know, you were there. It's like, well, I, I don't know. But the, ah, but the creature from the Black Lagoon yeah, was yeah. in there. That's the most famous face in silent movie yeah. horror. Yes. That's Lon Chaney Sr. from yeah. Phantom of the Opera, 1925. And this is a replica built by Mike Hill. Nice. Mike's, Mike's mm. artwork to me is almost yeah. as good as some of the originals. Yeah. Oh, I would have to agree with you. He also did Cosimoto from 1939's Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is the best version. Mm. If you look behind you, it's, this is what I was talking about. That's Elsa oh, Lanchester from yes. The Bride of Frankenstein. This extremely iconic female monster who had a movie named after her, and she's in three minutes of the movie yeah period yeah wow. she's in no yeah, more but than it that. was it was an unforgettable three minutes yeah <laughs> most famous face in horror movies is Karloff Karloff in real life was 5'11 he was not a big guy this guy made Dracula in 31 which was this huge hit because Lugosi thought he was Dracula yeah yeah and if it hadn't been for the success of that movie all these other ones wouldn't have gotten made mm. <laughs> and I love Lugosi, so I had to have him in here. These are all Mike Hill figures as well. Oh, yeah. There's a... <laughs> it's very, works every time, doesn't it? <laughs> the, the sick, this is the sick triceratops that yes. Laura Dern tries to help in the movie. That's the hero head. Here's another one of these beautiful raptor insert mm. heads. Okay? Oh, that's, that's nice. This is the baby stegosaurus that Juliana Moore is trying to take pictures of when the parents come back. Yes, wow. it's really gorgeous. Now, you guys know about life casts. Oh, yes. Everybody knows how life casts are used, yes. right? Okay, the only one that's not in place or wow. is out of place is Bruce Lee. I found Bruce Lee's original life cast, the only one ever made. It was made for the Green Hornet. That's a copy of it. Mm. The original's at my home. But here we have Vincent Price, Cheney, Laurie, mm. Christopher Lee. Karloff, Lugosi, and the Karloff one on the left, those life casts are plaster castings the makeup department builds of these guys' faces and then the actors can go home mm -hmm. and they build the makeups on them. This was used for The Mummy and for The Mummy up here. That's the same movie. Mm -hmm. He starts off looking like that and then becomes this. Wow. And for Frankenstein, this one. Mm -hmm. That's all Karloff mm -hmm. from 31. You know what? And you guys, this process was That's started awesome. in 1923. And they use, that's the process they use literally today. Yeah. yeah. The same exact yeah. process they use yeah. today. You know what's weird to see this is so much of that makeup is 
Oh, well, that's what was why he was so great. Yeah. That's why James Whale hired yeah, him. it would all move totally naturally. He had this weird would, face. Yeah. Whale thought he had a really, quote, interesting face. Yeah. But Karloff, in a way, was almost offended when he was first uh. approached because Whale said, you'd make a great monster, and he was all dressed in his nice clothes and everything. Yeah. But it changed his life, so he was happy about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. He was very happy about it. I mean, all werewolves. That's a Lon Chaney wow. Jr. That's an well, no, that's a Mike Hill piece too. Right. That's oh, from 1941, yeah. but beautiful, beautiful yeah. work. Yeah. This is a Rick Baker, nice. American yeah. Werewolf in London. Wow. This is Anthony Hopkins' hero costume from The Wolfman. The main Wolfman in, in the remake, the Rick Baker one, is Benicio del Toro. <coughs> but his dad is played by Anthony Hopkins, and he's a werewolf too. That whole suit is hand-punched hair. Oh, so that's one of his original suits, and that's an original suit from The Howling. And this movie came out the same year this movie did, so they were in a oh, rush yeah. to try to get who yeah, comes out yeah. first. I'm such a fan of American Werewolf in London. I, I'd, have to, I'd have to Beetle watch that, I love that. <laughs> So there's some Beetlejuice yeah. stuff, and then this, you guys, that's oh. Vladimir Furtick's original stunt head and his costume, season four from the Game of Thrones. That all came out of England. All the Game of Thrones fans love that. Now, you know who this is? You know who that is, oh, Marsh? Yeah, Look. Yeah. <laughs> I She's think coming the after can, you. But I love jerked a little. <laughs> yeah, that was, to me, that was. You want to see that again, Adam? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah, that's a great film. Okay. This is Joseph Bashera's screen used makeup effects head in his costume from The Conjuring. That's a guy playing a female witch. Mm -hmm. She sits on top of the dresser and scares all the little kids. He's actually the composer of the movie. Okay, now here's another female hero raptor from Jurassic Park 1. And here's a great view. You can see a good, I know you guys are making T-Rex heads. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great view that's of the really Stan nice. Winston one. Yeah. Yes. And then what about this? That's his vest, his coat. Sorry, wow. his vest, his shirt, and his tie. This is all Heath Ledger stuff from, and then the face is really, really cool. Anyway, this is one of the most famous Jokers and the Academy Award winning Joker. He won an Academy Award for playing the Joker and around the corner, you're gonna see another guy who won for playing the Joker, which is Joaquin Phoenix, who won in 2019 for playing him. And then the Jack Nicholson Joker's down at the Chinese Theater now in the lobby oh, in wow. a glass case. He's down there now. Oh. This is another Doug Jones costume. That's Abe Sapien, who's Hellboy's sidekick. And then this is Ron Perlman's life cast mm. in makeup as Hellboy was his entire costume and his gun. This is the Beast from X-Men First Class. Again, that's a completely hand-punched costume. All that hair is hand-punched. That was a really good movie, and that's a really good version of The Beast. And all three of these guys, another Doug Jones on the end, The Silver Surfer, that's from Rise of the Silver Surfer, but all three of these guys are from the Fantastic Four movies. So you have The Thing, and you have the main villain, which is Doctor Doom. Those are all screen news costumes. Jack Skellington here. This Jack Skellington, the real Jack Skellington's a miniature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about this big. That was in Burton's office, so I, uh, I thought I'd get it. However. Wow. The Jim Carrey costume is all the original costume and oh, the shoe and the leggings and the oh shoes and the makeup gosh. from the Grinch. That's all the real thing. Oh. Here's another Peter. Oh. He wore this. Yes. Beth doesn't oh, like spiders. <laughs> Beth is afraid of spiders. These like are the one that's crawling up her shoe, <laughs> These are all spiders from Iraq. <laughs> oh, that got him. Nice. That was perfect. We got the cameraman. Ladies and gentlemen, we got yeah, the yeah. cameraman that time. See that? See Beth that doesn't again. like jumping so, spiders. Oh, yeah. You want to do that again? Because we, we, yeah, we say, here, look at these spiders. Yeah. And the people are looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> you know good. what that is. Yes, oh, of so course. Cool. And the people who did the makeup and hair are friends of mine. They heard we were doing this, so they came in and refashioned his hair. Oh, my God. So there's this whole costume oh. and a set of his original hands. That's all from Edward Scissorhands. Wow. So I'm really, I'm yeah. very proud of that. Yeah. The naked That's woman behind you is me. Rebecca Romaine. That's from X-Men. Oh, yeah. Wow. And that's her as Mystique. And then over here, this huh. is the costume that Robert Downey Jr. gets oh, kidnapped man. in in Iron Man 1. Behind it is an Iron Man statue that's in the background for Avengers Age of Ultron. Now Robin Williams was a good friend of mine because I worked oh. on Mork and Mindy for three yeah, years. Right. So here he is as Mrs. Doubtfire, oh. one of his most famous roles. Yeah. He's in a hero costume, and that includes his wig, his glasses, and his wow. earrings. So that's all for Mrs. Doubtfire. Wow. 
next to that. Oh man, that's great. That yeah. is so cool. Oh, yeah, that's a Christopher yeah. Lloyd original, including the remote control. No wow. way. That runs the DeLorean. That's it, that was in the film. Uh -huh. yeah. And so was the costume. Wow. And you guys, we end with, oh. this is one of the only E.T. statues that the studio ever generated. It came from Carlo Rambaldi's lab, and that's a complete, a complete ET, which they're very, very rare. Yeah. Even the Academy Museum has an ET, but we think it's an insert head on a fake body. That's all the real one. Wow. And that's where it ends. We're not going to scare you anymore at all, oh. Marsh. So there's a lot of people that come through this that's thing. Awesome. Did you guys have fun? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, they loved it. I did a lot of American television shows starting around 1957. Uh, and then around 1959, I got cast as a regular on Leave it to Beaver, so I spent a lot of time doing that. I went to sc uh, school on the set while I was enrolled in grammar school, but then when I went to high school, high school said, no, you can't do that anymore. So that kind of ended the acting career. But then I went to USC where I graduated as a cinema arts major. And while I was there, I was t teaching a four unit course in vintage comedy. So I was already brought up in comedy. When I left USC, I started going around doing production work and ended up at Paramount, first as a music coordinator for Gary Marshall, and then I started associate producing Laverne and Shirley, and then associate producing Happy Days, which I then ended up line producing and writing on Happy Days. I also worked on Mork and Mindy and most of the material that Gary Marshall was producing in those days, which was The Odd Couple, Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy, and Happy Days. When I left Paramount, I went with Miller Boyette, where they started ramping up sitcoms for Lorimar, and I started writing and directing and producing The Hogan Family, and that was a show with Sandy Duncan and Jason Bateman. I went from there to starting the TGIF lineup at ABC, which was Family Matters, Full House, Step by Step, and Perfect Strangers. So I was series director on most of those shows. So I was doing all of that, producing and directing, and doing mostly directing. And then in 2000, I went over to Disney when they started ramping up multi-camera. And I started um, as series director on That's So Raven, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Bunked, Jesse, all of those shows. And then I created Hannah Montana. And so as the creator of that, I was also the principal director on that show as well. And in the meantime, while I was doing all this stuff, spending my entire life in comedy. My hobby was the polarity of that, which was collecting all the science fiction, fantasy, and horror from memorabilia. So here we are today. I spent my whole life doing American television, 99% of it in comedy, directed three features, things like that. But here I am, and now it's all icons of darkness, and this is where I'm spending most of my time now. So, so in a everything natural, but the love boat. Everything but the love boat. <laughs> Didn't do the love boat, but I did everything else. I wanted to do horror film. Well, you know, it's funny, I did a series called The Nightmare Room for R.L. Stein, and then I directed and wrote um, two of his books called Mostly Ghostly. Oh. But the R.L. Stein stuff is horror, but for younger people, yeah. so it's kind of tame. Yeah. But that's the only stuff I really yeah. did, because I yeah. was busy. You know, they had me under contract doing oh, yeah. all these, yeah. these comedies. Yeah. Making a living. And by the yeah. way, you know, when people scream, they usually laugh. Yeah. So a lot of comedy and a lot of horror stuff is kind of similar. Yeah. yeah similar yeah. emotions. So uh, I like I like yeah. scaring people as much as I like yeah. making them laugh, and they kind of like run in the same vein. Yeah. And, and then here, you know, we just would, when we were touring through, we heard people in the background getting scared and then yeah. laughing. Yeah. So that's really cool. I like yeah, doing why that. Why is that? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You did yeah. that too. <laughs> so there you go. I've been around a while. Oh, mercy. I've directed not, I've yeah. directed 719 episodes oh, of no television. Way. So it's been a it's been a long run. And that's the directing. I produced for seven and a half years before that, and then acted for three years before that. So I'm up around 15, 1600 episodes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rich, I cannot the thank you enough legend. for a no. personal tour of this place. Thank you. Just personal like, tour. I'm glad to have you guys. And it's still Wonderful. like half of what you have. It's only half. There's only half of it here. There's a lot more of it either in storage or in other places that we're hoping to put into a much bigger place which would be a science fiction, fantasy, and horror hall of fame, because these films deserve yeah. to be recognized and preserved and really paid tribute to, I think. So that's my goal. Yeah. Awesome.